So what, what is this? What are we looking at here on the screen right now? Don't focus on the code. Don't focus on the text that you see. Focus on the entire picture. Focus on the application that I'm looking at. This is called an interactive development environment or an IDE. And I think the key word right there is actually this I, the interactive part. It is interactive. It's more than just a text editor. It's something that you can not only write text or code in like you see right here, but also interact with it. It will actually tell you things about your code. It can tell you when it's broken. It can tell you when some of the syntax or the stylization of the code is wrong. And it can even test your code or debug your code as we like to say. Now you're gonna to get to know the ins and outs of IDEs quite a bit throughout this set of videos. Your first step is just to, well, get one. So how do you get an IDE? Well, check this out. If I flip over one page right here, I've Googled popular IDEs, even though I already know exactly which one we're gonna be working with. The thing is with IDEs is there's lots of them. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they cost money. Some IDEs, are really good for specific programming languages. In fact, right here is kind of one that I'm looking at for the example, PyCharm. PyCharm is really good for the Python programming language. Some programming languages are a little bit more general purpose. For the most part, this list that you're looking at right here is all pretty specific to specific programming languages. IntelliJ, for the most part, has been used by Java developers, even though it adds some support for a couple other programming languages. PyCharm is for Python. RubyMine is for, well, Ruby. Visual Studio, right here, this is Visual Studio, basically the classic version of it, is for the .NET framework, which is heavily used by the c -sharp programming language. You'll learn more about those key terms and what makes a framework and a programming languages later. Just trust me when we're talking about the applications for right now. Xcode is largely for Apple developers. And for paid solutions, a lot of software developers do like working with things like JetBrains. JetBrains does make a lot of IDEs. If you click on developer tools right here, you'll see a lot of the items that we just talked about are listed right here. But for most developers, a one size fits all solution that is modular, meaning we can add stuff to it, is Visual Studio Code. This is free, this is general purpose, but we can add extensions or basically like plugins into it that hone in the ability to work with specific programming languages and do some really cool stuff with it. Visual Studio Code is open source. And open source is something we're gonna talk a little bit more about what that means and why it's important and why it's a big deal in the next video. For now, we're just gonna leave it at one sentence. It means it can really run on anything. And again, I'll dwell on that, what that really means a little bit more in the next video. But for now, this is the application that I'm going to be working with. And quite frankly, this is the application that I actually do my production software development in right now. It is free, it is extraordinarily powerful. And if it doesn't come out of the box with the functionality or the support that I want, I can add it with extensions. So what I'd encourage you to do right now is download and install Visual Studio Code. You can see the various platforms that are supported right here, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. And it does work on Apple Silicon. So if you're working with the ARM uh, CPUs, it'll absolutely work for that too. So go ahead and install that. And then go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code, which is where I am right here. I'll go ahead and close these files here and kind of show you some of the things that you can do. We're gonna spend some time setting up Visual Studio Code to work the way that you want it to. Go here under Code, go to Settings, and take a moment to actually explore color themes. I know you're thinking, wait a minute, like this is a, a software development course and we're talking about color themes. Yes, we are talking about color themes because you know why? You're gonna be staring at this screen for a long time and it needs to be in a color format that your eyes are comfortable with. 
You can even add new color themes by browsing additional color themes right here at the top. It'll search for color themes. You can actually load a huge list, although right now my loading failed, I think probably because I'm connected to a VPN right now. So again, I do highly recommend you actually take the time to explore your themes and pick a color theme that you can stick with. I know this is, it seems silly, but it's actually something that I've found has been a really important thing uh, for me to stay focused in on what it is that I'm working with. Okay, next thing that I wanna talk about is just the layout of VS Code right here. Now your layout's gonna look a little bit different the first time you launch it. All of this stuff right here on the right-hand side of my screen is actually gonna be on the left-hand side of your screen. I moved it to the right-hand side of my screen on purpose. You might be thinking, why would I have done that? I'll show you. Just to flip it back for a second, this is probably more like what you're seeing by default. When I click this little gear down here by the bottom, I'll click Command Palette, and I'll search for the word Position. You see this toggle primary sidebar position? If I give it a click, it'll flip it over here to the right side. Now, why did I do that? It's kind of a subtle thing again, that's just about keeping my attention and keeping me focused in on working. Whenever I actually bring up a file, any file that I wanna work with, I'll show you if I bring up just a, uh, you know, a little script right here that I'm working with. If I do Command B or Control B on Windows machines, it collapses that screen. So I get a little more real estate on my screen to work with. When I have this stuff over here, this positioned window over here on the right-hand side, it doesn't move my code. See, check this out. If I put it back, go to Command Palette, type in Position, toggle the position bar over here. Now when I do Command B, see it shifts my code? It's a subtle thing, but it's another thing that's really, really important for me to be focused in on being efficient. So the ability to collapse without shifting my code is just another thing about setting up my environment in such a way that I can do a lot of software development over a long period of time and just make it a little bit more sustainable. Now, some other things that are gonna be helpful to you to actually just understand how to navigate around VS Code. One of the things VS Code shows you is what programming language you're currently working on. It's small, it's subtle, but it's right here. See where it says move right there where my mouse is at the bottom? That's because I'm actually working with the move programming language right now. If I change this to something entirely different, like this markdown file, see I changed to the markdown file and now it's pointed out that this is a markdown language right here. I can change it one more time to be something like a Rust file. Let's just grab a Rust file here. And there it is. Here we go. There's a Rust file. And you see now it shows that this is a Rust file down there. So Visual Studio Code can detect what programming language you're working on just by looking at the file extension. And importantly, it can also highlight the syntax and understand some of the things that are going on in that file by this detection. Sometimes though, it doesn't get the detection just right. And you can actually click on the language right here and choose all of these languages that it can support out of the box, or maybe not out of the box. If you need to add support, for certain types of programming languages or any additional functions, this is where VS Code really shines. This is what makes it so popular. It's the ability to add basically plugins into VS Code on the fly that extends all of the things that it can do, that it can extend all of the support that it has. And that's what these little building blocks right here are, these represent. These are the extensions. If we give it a click right here, I'll collapse the extensions that I have installed and you can see some of the extensions that it recommends right out of the box. But you can search for anything that you want, like Python support. Search for Python and you'll see a lot of Python extensions pop up for you to work with. The official Microsoft supported Python language extension is probably the one that you wanna go with. I go ahead and encourage you to click on this Python extension right now. And where you see right here, it says like disable for me, I would go ahead and click the install button for you. Go ahead and do it. 
you'll see in just one second, Python support has been dropped into your VS Code application. That's all you had to do to turn this into a Python development environment. Feel free to explore other things. Search for something like Go. The Go programming language is very popular this day and age. So you see this one right here, Go Team at Google. Give that one a click, install it too. Now VS Code supports Go. You can do the same thing for Rust, another programming language that I highly recommend getting familiar with. I'm personally using the Rust Analyzer extension right here in my own environment. Now there's a lot more extensions that I'll probably introduce you to when the time comes. This is all about just getting familiar with the tool, getting familiar with VS Code. The final thing that I want you to see is the terminal itself. This is where you can actually run and debug your code. All you have to do is go to the top window of your screen and click New Terminal. And it'll pop up a command line terminal right here in the application. You don't have to jump between applications now, leaving your text editor to go to a terminal to run a script and see what it does. Now you can look at it all in one place, thus proving that this really is interactive. Now I promise you're gonna see so much more of this application, the ins and outs of what it can do, even in this skill. So for now, we just wanted to get VS Code and start getting familiar with just the landscape of it. Take some time to customize it and kind of set it up to work the way that you would like it to. Basically, pick a good color theme and choose if you want this window to be collapsible on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Some of the other things that these icons mean, don't worry. We're gonna explore them as we progress. But for now, this has been getting your first application installed, the IDE VS Code.